Hey, welcome to another video from the Fun Farm Tech at the Farm Bill Technician course. Make sure to like and subscribe to this video for future videos that will help you pass the PTCB. If you do subscribe and comment below, you will be entered for a chance to get the complete eight week course for free. So go ahead and do that. So what week three is gonna do, first we're gonna start off and we're gonna review what we talked a little bit about last week. So with the math, Actually, this is gonna be a review of weeks one and two. So for the math, how many milliliters are in one ounce? 30 milliliters. How many grams in a pound? 454 grams. How many pounds in a kilogram? 2.2 pounds. How many grains per ounce? 438 grains. How many ounces, how many ounces in eight grams? 0.5 ounces. How many milliliters in a pint? 480 milliliters. How many teaspoons in a tablespoon? Three teaspoons. How many 300 milligram doses can be prepared from a 12.7 gram vial of cefazolin? Well, you remember, first we do line equals line. Our knowns go here. Our unknowns go here. One dose equals 300 milligrams. We'll have to convert the 12.7 grams to milligrams, so that would be one, two, seven, zero, zero. When we cross multiply and divide, that'll give us 42 doses. All right, go ahead and do the next one by yourself. Pause, give it a try. All right, so the answer is 25 grams. All right, so the, some of the things that we're gonna talk about and go over today are gonna to be the inventory and the pharmacy workplace, anti-anginals and the anti-arrhythmics, the percentages and concentrations. So inventory control and the pharmacy workplace. At the end of this section, you will be able to understand the purpose of controlling inventory, understand the purpose of formularies, Understand the process of placing products on a formulary. Understand the relevance of expiration dating and how to decode it. Understand what is involved in a drug diversion and how to detect and prevent it. Understand the relevance of quality assurance and what his or her role might be in measuring it. Inventory cost is defined as a company would ideally like to have a, enough inventory on hand to fulfill every prescription it receives. But on the other hand, not so much inventory as to incur unneeded inventory costs. The three things that are taken into account for the inventory cost is gonna be the cost of space, the cost of drug products, and the value of money. Sources of pharmaceutical products. The manufacturer is the entity actually producing drugs. A wholesaler sells, but does not dispense to patients, drugs purchased from most, if not all manufacturers. Purchasing groups are multiple hospitals or pharmacies joining together to increase purchasing power. When a pharmacy agrees to buy most or all of their supplies from one wholesaler, the prime vendor or wholesaler will provide a loyalty discount. Pharmacies can also purchase from wholesalers alone or buy from other pharmacies. So let's just say that you have your pharmacy, you're opening up a pharmacy and you want cheaper products. You go to one company and they say, okay, we're going to go to the Fun Farm Tech to buy all our medication. And so because you're coming to the Fun Farm Tech to buy all your medication, I'll give you a discount. Purchasing group, like it says, is when multiple groups come together to buy in bulk. So the more you buy, the cheaper it becomes. Economic order quantity. The EOQ is a calculation that is used to determine optimum infrage levels for each medication, as well as at what inventory level reordering should occur. Do not concern yourselves with the calculation itself, just the concept. Ideal amount of inventory, reorder level, and emergency level. All right, so I drew a, a funnel or a, a test tube, I guess you could say, um, with different levels, okay? So the ideal amount of inventory, we're gonna say the ideal amount of inventory is this line. The reorder level is this line. The emergency level is this line. So once it gets to this level, or at this level, this is where you want it. This is where you always want to be. 
once the medication is used and spent and dispensed, eventually it's going to be at the reorder level. When it gets to this point, you'll want to reorder it. Now sometimes medication goes out a lot quicker than anticipated and so when that happens, you know, sometimes it doesn't give you time for the reorder level and it just goes to the emergency level. Placing orders. While computerized inventory and barcoding have made inventory more manageable, the technician's role is checking inventory in and out becomes all the more important in order to give those levels meaning, as they may affect when drugs are reordered. Ways to do this is the barcode and automated technology, and there's a want book to document special order items. So maybe you have someone who comes into your pharmacy who needs a special kind of medication, you want to get it for them, you can put it on the special order items list if the pharmacist asks you to. Receiving orders. Reconciling invoices, updating inventory, and control substances. Drug formularies and policies. The Pharmacy and Therapeutics PNT Committee is made up of medical staff representatives and possibly administrators who decide which medications at a facility or in a medical plan will be covered and or available for dispensing. Their decisions are primarily based on a combination of cost and medicinal or medical effectiveness. So the pharmacy and therapeutics committee is going to be important to know what they do. And, and basically what they do is they tell you what medications will be covered by the insurances and which ones won't be. And to determine which ones will be covered, they take into account the cost and the effectiveness of the medication. If a drug is to be added to a formulary when something similar is already approved and included, it will exhibit one or more of the following characteristics. This is also going to be important to know. I would recommend all this is going to be important, of course, but this is something that I really want to press upon. So a medication has better effectiveness, has fewer side effects, better tolerated by patients, lower costs. So it needs to exhibit at least one of these four different things. It can do more, probably the more the better, but it needs to have at least one of these four qualities. Formulary benefits. When instituting a formulary effectively, these benefits can and should be expected. Best available medication choices, decreases, decreased inventory items and amounts, negotiated pricing on preferred medications, restricted prescribing, limiting who can prescribe certain medications and usually limited to specialists with a certain field. For example, antibiotics may be limited to infectious disease specialists only. There are some medications out there that doctors actually need to go through special training in order to be able to dispense because the side effects are much more severe. Automatic stop orders. This is generally applied to physician orders calling for medications that require adjunctive monitoring. For example, regular monitoring of liver counts. The medication cannot be restarted or resumed until the physician has ordered a renewal for the drugs. So a doc so for example, you know, a doctor sends in a prescription just to test it out to see how you're going to react to this medication. So it'll give you maybe a 7-day supply, 10-day supply, 15-day supply, 30-day supply, just depends on what they see fit. And then automatic stop is going to go on the prescription, and once it goes on the prescription, they're not going to be able to get it refilled until the doctor calls in and says, okay, they're good to go. And the doctor's not going to do that until they go in to get the test results. Storage of pharmaceutical products. By learning how prescription drugs are dated, we can easily monitor when they expire and dispose of them in a timely and proper manner. Expired control substances almost always require two witnesses to destroy to avoid diversion. You know, just so someone doesn't start stealing the medications, we want to avoid that. So the expiration dates are usually dated in month, month, year, year. For expiration dates with month and year only, the expiration is always on the last day of the month at midnight. So for example, if a prescription expires, or if this prescription was written on November 12th of 2017, it's not going to expire until November 12th of 2018. Disposal of expired drugs. Control medications actually have special requirements to dispose of them. Drug recall. Keeping tight control of inventory allows for easy recovery of tainted supplies and helps in notifying patients who may be affected by the recall. Theft diversion of drugs. Theft or diversion of drugs will fall into one of these four categories. Be aware of, of what your supervisor expects of you to aid in avoiding or stopping internal theft. Robbery is with us a weapon usually during office hours of operation. Burglary. 
when the pharmacy is closed. Shoplifting. Theft of non-prescription items usually the primary responsibility of loss prevention. Internal theft. Keep track of money carefully when you're responsible and be aware of large disparities in inventory, controls especially. So if you notice that something is running short and it shouldn't be, you should definitely report it.